So in this video, we're going to look at lepton number and interactions. So we've seen previously a baryon number, just as we assigned a baryon number to hadrons, specifically baryons, we assign a lepton number, which is another quantum number, to leptons. And just like baryon number, this is always conserved. And we can think of this just like, you know, how we had with charge, this, this number that we associate with particles that's always conserved. We have the same thing with this lepton number. We, we assign it to these, these leptons, and it's always conserved in all interactions. Uh, and just before we start actually going into the nitty gritty of it, this is what's going to explain why we only have electron neutrinos going, why, why it's not possible to do this and have a, a muon neutrino interacting and creating an electron. So you can either see it as this only happens because of this conservation rule, or we have this conservation rule to kind of, to uh, to note that this is the only thing that's allowed to happen, kind of whichever way. The, the main thing is that this, this, uh, this, uh, this rule, this conservation rule is what, is, is kind of summing up what's happening here. The idea that you can only have these electron neutrinos creating electrons in this kind of interaction. You could never have a muon neutrino creating an electron. And this conservation law is gonna make it easy for us to work out exactly when we have muon neutrinos and exactly when we have electron neutrinos always. And that's gonna be really helpful. For instance, it will it will explain this kind of really confusing thing we had happening here. We had this electron being produced and then this muon neutrino and then this anti-electron neutrino, sorry, this electron anti-neutrino, uh, couldn't you have had, you know, instead of couldn't you have had a, 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 a neutrino, a muon anti-neutrino and an electron neutrino? Why couldn't you have had that instead for this to work out? And the answer is you couldn't because of what we're about to see. So it's really important. So this is lepton number and interactions. And what we do is we assign uh, a lepton number to each generation or type of lepton. So what we mean is that we don't just assign a lepton number to every lepton, we assign a lepton number to each generation kind of independently. So electrons and electron neutrinos and their antiparticles are one generation. So that means we have, you know, the electron, the positron, the electron neutrino and the electron antineutrino. And then muons and muon neutrinos and their antiparticles are another one. So just filling in all our symbols there, we see we have this, this mu minus for the muon and this, this uh, mu plus for the anti-muon, and then this is a muon neutrino here, and then a muon anti-neutrino. I uh, just uh, made sure that this color choice is the same as we had previously. So this is a, a yellow one for the uh, muon anti-neutrino. Again, this is purely just for, for me, obviously in exams, etc. you won't have this color system. It's just so, so I can easily represent to you all the different kind of neutrinos and anti-neutrinos we've got kicking around. So what we see is that lepton number must be conserved overall but also separately for each generation. So what do I mean by that? So what that means is that our total lepton number before any interaction has to be the same as our total lepton number after any interaction. That, that always has to be the case, but that's not enough. Hey guys, to continue watching this video and unlock hundreds of other super concise and exam board specific A-level physics videos, just click the snap revised smiley face. Join me today and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.